Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you can join me here today um, in, in this little mini class. So I decided that I was going to do this little mini class on how we can be successful as healers, entre entrepreneurs, and have a healing practice even during a pandemic. Um, because it's important, you know, um, and and I feel really strongly about helping everybody get their um, businesses going. And if you really are feeling called to be a healer, you know, you might need a little help getting a business up and running and actually really also knowing how to do that in the middle of this crazy time that we live in. So I'm going to be doing nine of these um, little mini classes and they'll be on Fridays at nine in the morning and Mondays at noon. So I hope that you can jump in and join us. Um, and they'll also be recorded so you can find them later in the video section of this group. Um, I'd love to hear any comments that you have too. So go feel free to like jump in there and um, um, chat chat with me. And the way I'm doing this in Be Live, so I can't always see your name, but I can see your comments. So um, just go ahead and comment. And I hope you guys can hear me. So that's good. So anyway, the nine that I'm going to do are we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to do long distance work because I think that's super important. We're also going to next time talk about how to run an in-person session. We're going to talk about how to add intuition, intuition and psychic stuff into the healings that you're doing. We're going to talk about finding a niche and getting clear on what you're offering so that you really understand what your real gifts are. We're going to talk about how much to charge, how do we get clients, which is always the big one. Um, how do we get our voice out and get people to notice us? And we'll also do a little work around our feelings of worthiness. Um, and are we, do we feel worthy? Do we, what, do we have a wealth wound? What, we're going to work with that a little bit too um, in this little mini class. Um, and then if you feel like you want more, I'm going to be at the end of the month launching a much bigger um, three month training on, on really how to do business skills for healers. This is my cat Tinkerbell. She's been in every Zoom uh, video that I've done in a, in a while. She just comes to visit. So there she is. She's a good healer cat. So let's talk about this. Can we really do work? Can we really start? What if you have nothing? Can you start with no, you have zero clients? Can you start a practice? Can you scale your business? And the answer is totally yes, yes, yes. People need healers now more than ever. And here's a couple of reasons why you can knock it out of the park right now. People need help when things get hard, even more than they do when thing, life is easy, right? And I've been working for 30 years as a healer, really never done anything else. This is my, my total gig. Um, and so I've worked through a bunch of ups and downs, financial ups and downs. And I worked through the recession and the crash of 08. And I got really scared. Then I thought, no one has any money. How is anybody going to afford what I do? Um, but, but my, my business, business exploded during 08. I had a three-month waiting list. Um, or a six month waiting list for a little while. Like I, and I think that when times get hard, people need us more than ever. Um, and, and it makes me feel like we are actually like an essential service. Like even though we're not listed that way, our work and what we're doing is so vital, so essential. And the weirder the world gets out there and the more people come under pressure, the more they turn towards healers. Um, I think another factor that's really in our favor right now is that um, people are very frustrated with the help they're receiving from the medical worlds, from mental health systems. There's this huge gap. I mean, they do what they do and they do, we need those things. They do what they do quite well, but there's this big empty space in the middle where people aren't feeling like their, their mental health, their wellness needs, their physical health are getting uh, met, met or handled by the medical establishment the way we have it now. And I'm not dissing them. God bless them. We love them. Thank God that they're there. And there's this sort of space in the middle that where we can fit, where we're going to, as healers, help people. Um, we sort of fill an empty gap that's there all the time. Um, and so we really, and on top, so we have those things. And then we also have this other thing that's really in our favor right now, which is what we call the shift in human consciousness. Some people call it the ascension. Some people call it the shift. Um, but it's really powerful, it's really real, and it's really happening right now. And to us as healers, that means uh, it's really important for a few 
big, big, big reasons. One of them is that as a healer, your healer skills and your psychic skills are probably on overdrive right now. Um, you probably have, I wanna say that you have more access to your power than you have at any other time in your life. Many people now are feeling called, they're waking up and feeling like, oh my God, I think I should be a healer. Um, and needing training, needing help getting there. Um, so, and that's a wonderful thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's really like my passion has always been to train healers, to train healers, psychics, empaths, sensitive people to go out into the world and do what you are gonna do so that, um, so that like we can save the world, man. Like the world, <laughs> the world needs all the healers it can get. So I feel super passionately about helping everyone be empowered to, to you need to be empowered in two ways. You need to be fully trained so that you're on the top of your game and your skills are like righteous. And then you also need to know how to get clients, how to put yourself out there, how to, um, and if that's not always the easiest side of things for healer types, like I happen to have a, a knack for that and a love of it. So I'm pretty good at it, but not everyone is. So we need both things. If you're gonna be fully living in your potential, yes, we need to train and we need to get our, our skills at their highest level, but we also need this sort of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial piece. So we understand how to get out there and get heard. So the people that are destined and meant to be our clients can find us. And that's also critical. It's also, these two things are equally important. So that's why I'm talking about this now, right? So just going back to the ascension, um, every the other part of the ascension, so the first part of it is that you're waking up as a healer and your skills are like on fire right now. Um, and then all everybody else, you, us too, but the whole world, our issues are bubbling up to the surface. Everyone's emotional, mental, physical, spiritual issues are boiling over. Um, so people need help more. I mean, I know it's happening for you. <laughs> it's also happening for the people that are meant to be your clients. And what's so fun about this fun, interesting, I have a weird sense of what's fun, but what's amazing about this is that we can really blow through our, our work at an accelerated level. So healing happens very, very quickly. And that is very wonderful for us and fantastic for our clients. I know you guys have noticed everyone's stuff is up. I know you've noticed your stuff is up to no doubt. And I can tell you honestly that in the 30 years that I've been seeing clients and working, I have never seen a time when it's better to do healing work. Like, you know, people come to my office with these gnarly issues and in the past, like in the 90s and the 80s, when I started working, it would take, it would take, it would take like, like 10 years of therapy and really heavy lifting to power through that issue. issue. And, and now I see people moving through, through that same, same stuff in about, I don't know, like, like a few months, months you know? <laughs> and, and so it's, it's that's, I, think I think that's, that's fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we have a pandemic, pandemic going on too, so I want to talk about that in a minute, minute right? Um, and the world is really changing. So how does the fact that we are in this strange state that we're in translate into, or how does it impact or affect your healing practice if you have one expanding it or if you want one starting one, right? Um, and what I just want to frame this in a slightly different way for you guys. Um, and what, what if it's true, and I believe true 100% that this is true, that, you know, things are changing, everything's always changing. What's happening now is that it's happening at an extremely accelerated pace. Um, and yet somehow this is part of the normal cycle of evolution, the normal cycle of evolution where, where, where change is normal. So we, things are born and get created. There's this period of sustaining what is born and then there's a deconstruction, a death, um, you know, a dying. So we're born, we live, we die. Things are created, they sustain, they decay. This is the normal cycle of life, right? Um, and But what's going on is we are in a very powerful deconstruction cycle right now. Um, and as a, as a country, as a planet, as a, the whole entire globe is going through this natural deconstruction cycle. Um, and I, I want to challenge you a little bit around the idea that this is, hey, can't stop that, that this is wrong or bad, that it shouldn't be happening. Totally get it that it's uncomfortable, totally get it that it's scary. Um, but I, let's see if we can drop the idea that there's a wrongness to it. Um, Cause I don't actually think there is. We need an upgrade, you know, where in order to like get up, upgrade your phone, you've got to let go of the one that you have. And, and when we get an upgrade, we get something that comes in at a higher level of beauty, harmony, and order than we have in the 
that we had in the past. And I think we can all agree that what we had in the past um, didn't work. Are you guys, are we getting an echo? How's that? Can you guys hear me now? How's it going? Can you guys hear? Let me take this off and see if I can. Anybody hear me? How's that? Better? Okay, thank you. So, um, so yes, so I think, I think that like, like we can sort of look at this as an upgrade and if we do, we can also look at, um, we can look at the fact that it sucks, it's scary, it's hard, N letting go is never easy, we panic, our personal selves don't like change really very much. Um, and, and at the same time, if we can surrender gracefully to what we're getting, I mean, I think we can all agree that what we had before, what, what we have been having isn't really working. Like our systems are non-functional. So we need this deconstruction thing. And I'm not saying it's easy. I know it's creating difficult situations for many people who are not privileged to start with. Um, and I do think there's an incredible opportunity here. And when we can focus on the opportunity, um, we can actually feel empowered and we can focus on the opportunity of the people that are struggling with the change as, um, you know, where we can step in to help. That's what I'm trying to say, right? So I love the, the Chinese character for danger me equaling chaos and opportunity, because that's what it feels like to me right now, chaos and opportunity. And I can get my head around those two concepts in a better way than I can if I just freak myself out that, oh my God, the world is ending, right? Um, so, so I want you to see if you can work on your mindset because a lot about business success is about mindset, right? And so the mindset of like, instead of a freak out, be like, okay, there's, it's scary. You're going to deal with our feelings. It's important to deal with our feelings. We need to do that. Um, and then once, once you've dealt, dealt with your feelings, feelings, work on your mindset to see like, how can I help? How can I serve? Where's the opportunity? Where's the opening? Um, and we must really full start by believing that we're worthy. And I'm going to do a whole little mini class on that topic, on worthiness and um, and mindset. But let's let's just I want you to dial in a little bit, like begin it, check, check your thinking, thinking like, like right, right now at the beginning, beginning of this little mini class. class how, how, how are you? What are you, what are you believing, believing is possible, is possible for, for you? Um, do you, do you, you see that that there's, there's opportunity here for you, and that you, and that you are, are beautiful, beautiful, skilled, skilled needed, needed, necessary, important, important and, and that, that if you think you are and you know you are you can step into the gap i'm telling you right now there's eight billion fairly miserable people on the planet okay that need you that need us there's so many available clients there's so many people who want what you have um don't for a minute think you can't get clients right now and we're going to do a whole class on how to get clients um and i wanted to talk i really wanted to start today about uh talking about how to do a really good long distance session. And I think next time I'll tell you a little bit more about my story, like how I started um, my business and why I love entrepreneurship. Um, but I was thinking, okay, like how can I support you guys the most? And because the pandemic has clearly shifted the way we do business, um, we've all shifted into this, um, uh, you know, when I'm talking about opportunities and openings, one of the amazing openings is to work long distance. And, um, it's a very powerful thing to do to work long distance. Um, there's been a lot of studies. First of all, there's been a lot of studies that say long distance healing, and I mean scientific studies that are published. If you want to go find them, you can, that show that long distance healing is just as powerful and effective and maybe even more than in-person sessions. I'm a touchy-feely person, and I love doing in-person sessions, um, and I still do. We're, um, we're going to talk next time on Monday about how to do an in-person session if you are feeling like you can do that or are living in a place where you're allowed to do that. Um, but there's incredible benefit in long distance. And there's some other advantages to it, too. Like, you can keep your overhead low and not need a big, fancy, or expensive office. Um, and you can work in your jammies. You can be at home. And Zoom has made this all easy since everyone is doing it. Um, everyone is in this shift. It's a really beautiful time to sort of jump ship if you're so inclined 
out of a physical practice or add keep your physical practice if you can and add long distance once you add long distance sessions in suddenly you have access to those 8 billion miserable fairly miserable people on the planet no matter where they are so it just opens up this incredibly um exciting uh potential for you can get cleansed even if you live in you know in the in the middle of nowhere um you can suddenly now get clients from all over the world i just think that's incredible um and super exciting so i wanted to teach you show you how i do um a killer absolutely killer long distance session that will make the person feel totally held cared for loved buttered up by you and will be so good that they're going to come back for more and bring all their friends too okay so um so that's and this is the way that i do it there are a bazillion ways to do it in fact i'd love to hear in the chat um, some of the other ways that you know how to do it, um, but this is how I do it, okay? So you're going to decide whether you're going to do it by phone, Zoom, or Skype. Zoom seems to be the thing, but you can do this also by phone. You want When you have your person, you want to schedule a time um, so they know, look, we're going to say, okay, we're going to meet, you know, we're going to meet at 10 o'clock, we're going to do this healing, get on the Zoom with them or get on the phone with them, and really it's important to make sure that that person is laying down or sitting comfortably. Um, not make sure they're not driving. I've actually had people uh, call in for their session. They're like, I'm driving on the highway. <laughs> and I'm like, no, like, you know, and it, it's not even like pull over because I don't necessarily want them to drive on the highway after we've done the session. It That's a reschedule, you know. So it's really important to set the expectation that the person receiving the healing, that your healing is so powerful <laughs> that you're going to knock the socks off of them and they should not be driving or operating heavy machinery <laughs> um, while while you're certainly while you're receiving the healing and probably for a few minutes afterwards as well. Right. So um, that's it's it's really critical that we do that. Um, and then once you've got them all situated, you want to start your session by doing a short intake and you can do a uh, written intake. I would recommend that we do that because we can capture a lot of information on a written intake. You can, they can email it back to you. They can fill it out if you're in person and, and then you have some, you know, notes that you can begin to work with, with them, but whatever, even if you do a more casual intake, the basic thing you're going to ask on an intake is what do you need in your session today? What's going on? What's bringing you in today? How can I help? And you, then you really want to listen. And I do think that it's very important um, to schedule a certain amount of time in the beginning of your session for listening. And I will go up to 15 or 20 minutes um, with the listening part um, because people don't get listened to very often, which is sad, but listen, really being quiet and listening to a person really talk about what's going on for them is an incredibly powerful healing. You are doing them an incredible service by quieting yourself. And when you're listening, I want you to really ground, have your feet on the floor, do some grounding, breathing, bring, bring the energy into your heart, get very grounded, open and soften your belly, create a grounding circuit to the earth and do long, slow breathing with a lot of open heartedness, right? so that you can hold space that's how we hold space we are grounded we're fully present with our heart open we're looking we're listening we're giving them our undivided attention that's how we hold space for people that's how we listen and if you do if you did nothing else you would be giving them a stellar healing just by doing that okay and and i just let them talk i'll let them talk and in that talking space i'll ask questions i'll tell me more that's actually all you have ever have to say <laughs> tell me more it's like you're about like to put it on a tattoo right here on your arm tell me like you know tattoo hang it on a sign behind where your client sits or something like that's your go-to phrase tell me more about that can you can you help me understand a little more what you're going through um and then maybe a little bit of ref um so that's called active listening active listening is when we listen and we prompt for more information or we make appreciative listening noises oh really hmm Hmm. Tell me more about that. Well, how did you feel about that? Um, you know, where you're sort of pulling more out of the person without adding any of your own stuff in. Um, and this, when you're in a client session, um, I, there's a little formula, 80% active listening, 20% reflective listening. And 
Um, if you go to therapy school, they teach you this in therapy school. And many of us as healers haven't been to therapy school, but this is what you would, this is the way to do it, especially if you don't have training in counseling. And reflective listening, so the 20% of this reflective listening is where you're not really adding your two cents, you're reflecting back what you heard. Oh, it, it sounds like you're really angry. Um, oh, I, heard, I can hear, I heard you saying how sad you are. And they'll be like, oh my God, you're right. I am angry, you know? And it, to you, it's like obvious because you are listening and receiving the information. Um, and um, But you're just reflecting back to them your observations about what their situation is. And I, I just totally cannot un uh, underestimate, I, and I don't want you to underestimate the power of the healing practice of doing this, okay? If you're super sensitive and super empathic, make sure you're in your bubble while you're doing this listening, right? So that you're grounded, your boundary, your bubble is up between you and your clients. Um, so you're open, the bound, the bubble should be open, like not like a brick wall, but protecting you from absorbing the blow. If you do absorb the blow, um, then you're going to drop that energy down the grounding core, just be like, you know, got like release it into the earth. And that's also doing the person an incredible service. We don't want to run it through our own systems if we can help doing that, because that's when we get tired. That's when we get sick. But if that does happen for you, and if you're an empath, it's going to be natural. You bring the light into your heart, you, and it does come in your heart. If you feel it there, you bring the light in and you like burn it in the fire of your own compassion. I'm saying, you know, and then drop it down the grounding cord to release it. Wow. Okay. And, I find that um, I really um, respect and honor the, the wisdom of my clients. So I know they know what they need. And I'll say, what do you need? And they always know. They always know. I need hope today. I'm so burned out and stressed out. I just need to have my energy tanks refilled. I, I need... I need just someone to talk to. I'm so stressed. I need, I need solutions. Or, you know, they will tell you and we want to honor that. We want to just, that's great. Now you know what to do. Um, and that's what you're going to do in the session. So once you've done, like, I'll do like 15, 20 minutes of that, then have them lie back, you know, okay, they need to be lying down, sitting down ideally. And then you're going to do your session. Um, now, and it doesn't matter what modality you have, Reiki, I'm assuming, because you're here in this group, but whatever, energy healing it's all good you, you can, can mix them together or you can do whatever i mean i mix them up in my own way that i do but if you if i'm working in my office um where i see clients i have a massage table there and what i'll do is i'll put uh like a pillow where their head is the bolster where their spine would be crystals where their hands and feet would be and i will actually and i leave the zoom window i'll put the computer on the i put the computer on my windowsill so i can see while i'm working them while I'm working on the table and then I'll watch what's going on, even though they're sitting there breathing or lying there breathing, I'll watch what's going on in their system as I'm doing the healing because I'm a visual psychic. Um, I can see what's happening. Um, so I'm watching what's going on there and uh, really appreciating, you know, I really, I can really appreciate the, uh, visuals uh, feedback I'm getting from Zoom while I'm doing that. Um, so, so I'll do the whole session, you know, and uh, as if they're like really on my table. If I'm here, I'm in my home office today and I don't have a massage table here, but I do have a desk. And sometimes I use a proxy, like you can use a doll, a teddy bear. Um, you can do all kinds of things as a proxy. Um, and that, you know, you're just going to do like your session on the proxy, right? However you do that. Then what you want to do is um, do like a little bit of an outtake, right? Um, and a lot of times what I'll, what I'll do before I even start the session is, you know, get them to breathe a little bit. I'm just jumping back to the beginning of the session now. Um, you want like, what, before you start, settle them down and get them to breathe, get them to breathe and ground so they can receive, because most of us are out of our bodies a lot. And if you can get them into their, into their body before you start the session, it's going to be really helpful. Then when the session's over, their people do it two ways. They, um, they do, um, some people don't 
talk at all at the end of the session. And they do that because the person's now in an altered state. They're now, um, you know, um, in, in that altered state we get when we do healing work. And the theory on that is that if you talk a lot and you process a lot, you bring them out of that altered state. It's usually the theta brainwave state. You bring them back into the beta state and they lo kind of lose it. Um, so some healers will just be like, okay, I'll, I'll touch base with you later. We'll talk about it in a few days. That's fine if you do that. I tend to let my clients process a little bit. How was that for you? And again, I'm letting them lead the, the conversation. How is that for you? Um, and let them talk. And then if you want to have some observations that you share, you can do that at the end. Oh, man, I'm so sorry about that, about the breaking up. That's annoying. I'm going to keep going and hope that I get a clean recording. Okay, and if not, we can do it over. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's really it. So then, then I'll share, let them share a little bit about how their, you know, how their experience was. And then at the end of the session, it's really important to, you, if you, if you want to, um, some, it's not a bad idea, especially if you're, wanting more clients to say, you know, is it okay with you if I email you in a couple of days to check in? And then make sure you do it, <laughs> you know? Um, a lot of people do that and really appreciate that. Um, so if you're, if you're going to do that, just set the expectation that you're going to ask permission that it's okay and make sure you actually do that. Um, and at the end of the session, um, you might want, you know, or if you're doing a little follow-up after the end of the session, you may want to let them know that um, you have a new client special, that you have a referral program, that you have a package deal for them. Um, you know, because they'll sometimes wait for the healer to lead. Well, how often should I work with you? Um, when should I see you again? And there's a little bit of a, um, I don't know, that you got to figure out like what that is for you. And I often will put that back on my client. Like I'm here for you whenever you need. And I have a package, you know, or um, maybe what about once a month? And then you're kind of going to negotiate with your client. It's important that you don't push um, an agenda on them, especially when they're in that very open state where we have to mind our boundary and not be like so hungry for clients that were like, you got to come once a week uh, until I pay all my bills, like which you would, I know you would never do, but just mindful of that. Right. Um, and because what you want is a session to, that you're showing up to be so supportive for them that they're like, oh, I really trust that person. I really, you know, got so much out of that person that I'm going to come back. And anyway, that's how to do a totally killer um, long distance session that will keep them coming back for more. Now, I hope you tune in. Um, I hope you tune in on Monday at noon. We're going to talk about how to do an in-person session during the pandemic. Um, and because it's tricky, it's hard to know, is it safe? How do we do it? How do we do it in a safe way? Is it even okay to do it? Like, we'll talk about that on Monday. And uh, in the meantime, I will catch you later. And let's carry on the conversation because I want to hear how you do a long distance session. Okay, you guys have a beautiful weekend and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.